Hi, in this video, I'll explain exact equations and the ideas behind them. Previously in the video about integrating factors, I mentioned there are a few big ideas in differential equations and two of them are, number one, we make an educated guess at the solution. And we're hoping that an existence and uniqueness theorem applies that would tell us that our solution is the unique solution. And idea number two is that our educated guess is based on derivative formulas that we know from calculus class. We see these ideas again in exact equations. So let's take a look. For example, solve the initial value problem. 2x plus y squared plus 2xyy prime equals zero, and y at one is equal to two as the initial condition. First of all, this is not a separable equation. And second, it's not linear either. So we look at this and we go, what do we know from calculus that has the form of something plus something times dy dx? Our first instinct would be, how about the products rule? u prime v plus u v prime and this y prime could be the v prime. It doesn't quite work because of all the y's. So we take this off and we scan through our calculus book and eventually we land on the multivariate chapters and we see the chain rule for multivariate functions. It goes like this, given a function psi of xy, then the derivative of psi with respect to a parameter t is d psi dt equals psi sub x dx dt plus psi sub y dy dt, where the subscript refers to the partial derivative. And let me write the equation down here and we'll compare. Very promising, but not quite, because here we have dy dx, not dy dt, and we're missing the dx dt. Well, and clever guy says, well, you know what? If you want dy dx and this is dy dt, then let's just let x be t. So this becomes dx, this becomes dx, and dx dx is just equal to one. The derivative of x with respect to x is one. I can squeeze in a factor of dx dx here. And I have match. We have the matching form. This matches this. So the two derivatives match. So um, this part and that part must match. This is also dx. So the whole equation is just deep psi dx equals to zero if we can have these matching. The equation becomes, if we can have matching, If we can match psi of psi sub x, the partial derivative is equal to two x plus y squared and psi sub y is equal to two x y. Well, let's see, can we find psi? Well, from the first part here, it says that psi is equal to the integral of two x plus y squared dx. 
And from the second one here, it says that psi is equal to integral of 2xy dy. Let's call this number one and this call this number two. Let's do these integrals. Number one, integral of 2x plus y squared dx is equal to x squared plus y squared is treated as a constant when we're dealing, when we're integrating with respect to x. So it gives us x, y squared and plus a constant. This constant is a constant in x, but it doesn't necessarily have to be a constant in y. Could be a function of y. Call it c1. The second integral, integral of 2xy dy gives us xy squared plus some constant c2 that is constant in y, but that means it could be a function in x. In this case, we're kind of lucky that certain things match. We can sort of pretty much guess that this is that. And there's no more y to be had, so this can go to zero. We finally arrived at psi of xy is x squared plus xy squared. And the equation was the psi dx equals zero. Psi is equal to some constant c x squared plus xy squared is equal to some constant c. And that's the general form of the solution. Now we use the uh, initial value condition. It says y of one is equal to two, x equals one, y equals two, plug it in, I get one squared plus one times two squared equals to c, c equals five. So the particular solution is x squared plus xy squared equals to five. Let's go to Desmos and try to graph this. And here's a solution curve. It's not a function in the algebra sense because it fails the vertical line test, but it's a perfectly good graph of a, rela of a relationship between X and Y. In this class, you, you will see a lot of times where a solution is given in an implicit equation like this. Now, if you want to, you could always write as plus or minus the square root of etc. but uh, we don't have to. And you should get used to the idea that we don't need to always have Y by itself on one side. Now let's go back and look at what we did. We started with this equation and it has this form, M as a function of X and Y plus N as a function of X and Y times Y prime or dy dx equals zero. We squeeze in a factor of dx dx and we did some matching to the multivariate chain rule formula. D psi dx is equal to m times dx dx plus n times dy dx, where we're hoping that psi sub x is equal to m and psi sub y is equal to n. And we were lucky that after checking the integrals, they match. But that's just luck in this case. In the general case, how do we ensure that they match? And for that, we need a theorem from multivariate calculus. And the theorem says, given a function psi of x and y, if psi is continuous in some rectangle on the xy plane, 
and the two partial derivatives psi sub x and psi sub y also continuous. Then psi sub x y equal psi sub y x. In other words, the second order mixed derivatives are equal no matter which variable we differentiate first. This one we differentiate with x first and then y. This one we differentiate with y first and then x. And the theorem says that if psi and the first order partial derivatives are all continuous, then the second order derivatives are equal, no matter which order we do them in. Back to our equation, we have this. We have psi sub x is equal to m. We have psi sub y is equal to n. And we assume that they're all continuous. Then we take the derivative, both sides of the first one here with respect to y. And we take the derivative of both of these with respect to x. The calculus theorem tells us that these two are equal, and therefore these two must also be equal. Therefore, m sub y equals n sub x. And conversely, if we have m sub y equals n sub x, then we can work backward and deduce that both m and n come from the same function psi. So let's make that into a theorem. Given the equation, m, which is a function of x and y, plus n, function of x and y, dy dx equals zero. If m, n, m sub y, and n sub x are all continuous, in some rectangular region, a less than x less than b, c less than y less than d, then there exists a function psi of x and y such that psi sub x equals to m and psi sub y equals to n if and only if this condition is met. In that case, the equation is said to be an exact equation. And the solution is given by psi of xy equal to some constant c. I'm not going to prove this theorem. Almost all differential equations books contain a proof. Instead, I'll repeat the theorem in the form of a step-by-step -step method. On the left, I write the method. And on the right, I run through the example we just did. Number one, step one is the equation must be of the form mxy plus nxy times dy dx equals zero. The form must be exact like this. The right hand side must be equal to zero and it must be an addition between them. If it's a uh, subtraction, then merge that negative sign into the function n. The equation we just had was 2x plus y squared plus 2xy, y prime equals zero. The right hand side is zero. The sign is an addition and it is in, in this order with the y prime over here. So we're good. This is our M and this is our N. 
Step two, must verify that m sub y equals n sub x. Over here, m sub y is the derivative of m with respect to y, so we treat x as a constant. So derivative of two x with respect to y is zero and derivative of y squared is two y. N sub x, take the derivative of n with respect to x. So y is a constant, derivative is two y. And they are equal. Number three, once m sub y is equal to n sub x, then we know by the theorem that there exists a function psi such that psi sub x is equal to m, m psi sub y is equal to n. And therefore we can integrate both sides to find psi. I mean psi is equal to integral of m dx or psi is equal to integral of n dy. You only need to do one, not both. So pick one that's easy. In this case, I'm gonna pick n. Psi is equal to the integral of n dy is equal to 2xy dy xy squared plus some constant, but beware that that constant is constant in y, meaning it could be a function of x. So let me write that down as a step in the method here. Beware that the integral of m dx is something plus a constant in x, but could be a function in y. And the integral of n dy is something plus a c that could be a function in x. Step four, we find the cx or cy by, and here's a, here's the key to remember which is which. We already use n and y to find psi. Now we're gonna use m and x. By differentiating, with respect to the variable in the C. I'm gonna differentiate psi with respect to X, Y squared plus C prime of X. And psi sub X is supposed to be M. And match it to the M or N. And it will be the other one as the one you integrated. You integrated N, down here you use M. You integrate it with respect to Y and down here you're taking derivative with respect to X. And what was M? M was two X plus Y squared. Which is two X plus Y squared, that means C prime of X is equal to two X. And that means C of X is equal to X squared. Plus some constant C, but we'll ignore that C because you get merged into the C on the other side of the equation. Number five, the solution is given by Psi of X, Y equal to some constant C. Psi is here, x, y squared plus c, c of x, and that is x squared. Solution is given by this. And number six, use initial condition to find c. Our initial condition was one comma two, that gets us c equals five. For your convenience, I'm typing the steps in the process here so that you have it in one place. Hope that helps. Subscribe for more content. Thanks for watching. Bye.